Hello there. I thought I'd introduce you to a few different debate techniques that are often employed by the people who put the dumb in freedom. It's a technique or three that you've probably heard the terms of before or at least recognize them in the way that information is debated and events are taken over. Uh, and we saw that this week when the Panmure Otahuhu candidate for Vision NZ, Carl, or is it Carl, and if your own party doesn't know how to spell your name, what hope is there for voters out there? Uh, Mokoraka, when he got decided to impersonate Wilson from Home Improvement, lean over the fence and start yelling at Christopher Luxon and a press stander. Now, these techniques are usually used in unison, so you'll see bits and pieces of them pop up all the time. It includes the gish gallop, which essentially is flooding the zone with bullshit. So much bullshit that it's insurmountable to be able to debate it all and debunk it all. And it's usually made up of half-truths, outright lies, misinformation and disinformation. And it's really, really common. There's something called Brandolini's Law that comes into effect with this, which essentially is the amount of effort that's needed to debunk all of that crap far outweighs the amount of effort that went into putting that crap out there. And the best way to debate this and fix this is to actually take the most stupid, ludicrous thing they say, pull it to pieces and show just how bad it is and not focus on everything altogether. And it's much easier to do that in a formal setting instead of the informal setting, which we saw this week. The next thing that they do is something called sea lining. I am being polite. I am being respectful, but you're not answering me and I'm going to ask you a million other questions. And why won't you talk to me or debate me on this? It essentially means that they're sitting there trying to come across as pleasant and as civil, when what they're actually doing is using politeness to a point to make their point and drown out the other person that they're trying to talk with or trying to talk at. The third thing that they do is something called the fire hose of falsehood. And this is actually something right out of Vladimir Putin's playbook. Essentially, it's taking this one little bit of information, this little piece of content and spreading it as far as possible. That video, for example, that Carl put up online, well, that's been shared hundreds of times, and if we look at who's sharing it and where's sharing it, where it's being shared, you can see exactly how far they're trying to push this particular content, but the video itself is terrible quality. All you hear for most of it is wind on the microphone, because that's not the point. The point is you are seeing the name, and you are seeing that he is standing up to the man, and of course that's really why you want to vote for this individual. Flooding the zone like that with the firehood of falsehood is literally out of Vladimir Putin's playbook, and it's something that's been employed by these groups and by other groups who share similar beliefs to make sure that people don't get a say. They are flooded with exactly what it is that this organization wants you to see. We need to be really aware of these kind of techniques because it drowns out other information coming through. Like this was on the news, it filled up news feeds with what was going on because it was different and quirky and weird and annoying. But it means that you don't hear news like this, that Nationals actually decided to finally put up a fight in Epsom that the gloves have come off and that they are no longer gifting that seat specifically to ACT. That's big news. But you don't hear about that anywhere on the scale as you've heard about this other weird, disruptive, annoying individual getting out there and trying to push their agenda at the cost of everybody else having a chance to have their say.